Hey, Sandra, welcome to another episode of Asexual Life, My Asexual Life. This is the place to be for education about asexuality, all things asexual, and I share my own asexual life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button below right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon to get notified of every time I go live right now, post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a great big thumbs up if you're enjoying the content, if you find it useful, helpful, in any way shape or form or you just want to give this channel some like love i really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart so happy asexual perspectives awareness month if you didn't know july is asexual perspectives awareness month i founded this month in july 2017 when i published this asexual perspectives book this book uh was released in order to help those who have just discovered there might be asexual to answer any and pretty much all questions you could possibly think of when you're new to asexuality. And this is why I launched Asexual Perspectives Awareness Month to coincide with the launch of the book in 2017, which is all about celebrating our diversity across the asexual spectrum and our differences within it. So every July, I read excerpts from this book and we discuss the topics. So today's topic is all about um, what advice... Uh, would our interviewees in this book give to someone who's just discovering asexuality and maybe they think they are asexual. So if we go first of all straight to Elle's story, uh, this is Elle Hardwick. Oh, Tabitha, drop by to say hi to you. I can't be here long, it's late. <coughs> yeah, Tabitha, thank you. Oh, <coughs> I'm deciding to have a coffin fit now. Oh, Yeah. I'm later than usual. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, man. Um, I, I wasn't, I, I've only just eaten and it's like nearly 1am in the morning. <laughs> but it's lovely to see you, Tabitha. Lots of love. I love your little um, picture as well. It looks lovely. Um, so it's always lovely to see you. Um, and I managed to get your hearts back. You know, your hearts comment you sent me, I found it. And um, so it is there now. So... I did. I think I responded um, to it. So thank you for the love. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, so um, L, what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexuality and considering where they are or not? Uh, L's response was: Take your time in exploring your sexual identity. Don't rush things and never do anything you don't want to do. And um, I think that's so important because, you know, it can take a while. Like it took me three weeks to figure out where I felt on the asexual spectrum because I didn't exactly. Uh, I knew I was heteromantic. I know I'm only attracted to guys romantically. I'm never attracted to females. So I knew that much, but I didn't know uh, what else I might be. Oh, Tabitha, my picture is drawn by me. Oh, my goodness me. You're an amazing artist. It's beautiful really shines bright look it's really good it shows up really well thanks for the thumbs up really good congratulations keep up the good work um and so um yeah so when i first discovered i was asexual i joined the asexualitic.com website which is a, a dating website for asexuals and uh, some people use it social networking but it's predominantly used for dating it's a free site However, it's only free to join. It's not free if you want a private message. So there is a yearly fee. And um, I joined it and I was very nervous at first, literally, because I thought I could never date ever again because I thought being asexual, um, I just had the a few weeks before that I'd been told by the council I had to have sex in order to keep a good guy. Um, that's how I discovered asexuality. It went and googled i love kissing but not sex because i was horrified she said that to me and that's where i stumbled upon avon and, and asexuality um and so i was very tentative when i went on asexualitic.com because i got in my mind that there's no way i could date anymore because i didn't like the expectation of sex at the end of the day and it was just like terrifying for me because I, I i couldn't do sex anymore i have it in the past but i just couldn't bring myself to do that anymore and so I was worried, you know, that what's going to happen? I've never been on this site. I got my mind like thinking that I probably could never have a relationship again in my life. And all of a sudden, there's other people like me on this on this site. And I, I think I even promised myself, well, don't ever get into a relationship then, Sandra, because there's no point. And then I thought, well, you know, you're kind of going to break the promise to yourself. But 
That was because I didn't have all the information, you know. And I love romance and kissing. So anyway, I let myself off the hook and I didn't realise, you know, that there was other asexuals, other people like me. And so, you know, what started off on that site was, hi, I'm Sandra. Um, I'm happy being single. Thanks. Bye. It then turned into, um, you know, eventually it turned into like more of a profile, you know. And I think it does take a while sometimes to find out where you fit on the asexual spectrum. You know, you've got to sometimes it's a journey, you know. And you find out that you're a different type of asexual later on. So when I first went on an asexualitic, it was a guy who held asexual meetups actually in London, in the UK. And he was the one who said to me, because uh, I messaged him, because I was a bit confused about where I fell on the spectrum, although I knew it was heteromantic. I mean, he said, oh, you're definitely grey A, because, you know, grey asexual, because, um, because of the way I like to kiss. But when I looked online at what grey asexual meant at that time, it meant a catch-all term for those who don't, fit quite into an asexual or sexual box so it's between asexual and sexual and it's you know it's like a catch-all term that's what it used to be um at that point so I thought well I thought at that time Piyush Singh hey glad I didn't miss out on your life oh lots of love to you I met Piyush on ASAP the other day hello lots of love to I say lots of love to everyone by the way just in case you didn't know it's just I say that to everyone so it's lovely to say it say it's uh see you yeah so Tabitha is great uh illustrator because she drew that and Piyush is a beautiful singer if you haven't gone to his YouTube channel yet I did subscribe the other day and gave him a thumbs up he's got a beautiful voice very gorgeous voice um, he is Indian, I have to say, but he's spoken for pretty much. So nothing there. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining the chat. I really appreciate you being here. Really nice. Um, so, yeah. Um, so getting back to what I was saying. So when I first went on like, asexualitic, I was really tentative because I didn't know. Like I was like kind of worried because I didn't know what the site was about. And I kind of thought I wasn't going to meet anyone like me. And so, you know, eventually I filled out my profile. <laughs> Tabitha oh my god thanks so much you're welcome Tabitha um I love creative people because I love writing I love creative energy it's so awesome um I hope I've pronounced your name correctly Piyush is that how you pronounce it Piyush or I hope I've pronounced your name correctly anyway it's lovely to be, for you to be here I appreciate you um and so yeah um so I went on asexualitic I put out my profile on this guy um who I met through asexualitic.com he I thought he'd know what he's talking about because he arranged asexual meetups in the UK so he said I was a great asexual because of the way I like to kiss but when I looked at it it was a catch-all term between asexual and sexual and um and I thought oh right okay so um you know with the way I like to kiss um it's sexual in behaviour, despite the fact I don't experience any sexual attraction. But that was a thing that back at then, when I looked at it, it was it, and it is it is now um, basically grey grey asexual. Now is someone who does experience sexual attraction under limited, rare, or specific circumstances, or not enough to want to act on it. So they do experience it either infrequently, rarely, not that often, or in special circumstances. Um, so you know. Um, that's what he said. And I thought that must be right. But then I realised, I will tell you now, it's so weird. I went on Avon, asexuality.org, right? And they were talking about sex on there. And I know we're asexual, predominantly we don't like sex, right? Um, not That's not true of every asexual, right? But they talk so much about sex on Avon. I don't know if you noticed that. And I went in the forums. Hello, Eddie. Um, they talk in the forums Um basically about sex quite a lot on asexuality.org and I just was coming to know about asexuality and then I started getting aroused I don't want sex I don't like it for me thanks for the thumbs up love you lots but um my body started to feel aroused and I didn't realize I experienced arousal but no sexual attraction and then when I looked back at my life and the long-term relationship I've been in the past was eight and a half years in total and I realised that even though I had sex with that guy and other guys, I never actually thought actively in my mind, I want sex with you. It's never happened. And that's when I realised I'm not a textbook grey asexual. I don't ever experience sexual attraction. It's arousal I was feeling all those years. So that is what I thought and why I thought I was heterosexual for years 
and didn't know I was asexual because I experienced high levels of arousal but zero sexual attraction. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? And it's like, and so I could have got rid of the grey asexual label in the sense that I'm not a textbook grey, but because my kissing is sexual behaviour, despite not experiencing any sexual attraction, I felt that it wasn't right or fair just to not add something in about that because when I'm on dating sites, asexual dating sites predominantly, obviously, um, you know, I'm in some other I'm on some other in some other groups that aren't for asexuals. But obviously when I'm a, when I'm on asexual dating sites, most heteromantics that I come across, they are not sexual in behaviour and they're not into kissing like I am. So I keep my clothes on when I'm kissing. Like I love to kiss my clothes on, but I realised that, you know, it's my actual kissing and, and behaviour is sexual. So I felt it's not right. And it's it, it didn't feel comfortable to me to just say heteromantic. So I add the word grey A rather than grey asexual because I feel I'm not really a grey asexual. I think it's a grey area. So when I, re when I wrote this book, this asexual perspectives book, um, the link is down below in the description if you haven't already got a copy. Um, when I wrote this book, um, I, I literally... Um, Re basically redesigned the word grey A to mean grey areas and to be separate from grey sexual and grey sexual because they're all clumped together to mean grey areas because to me it is a grey area you know if I've got sexual behaviour but zero sexual attraction it can freak some asexuals that haven't got sexual behaviour out and then others it's not sexual enough for so it's kind of like a bit difficult uh let's see what's going on in chat Piersh yeah that's how I, you pronounce your name and thank you so much appreciate you um, hi Tabitha, Eddie, I am, but only in spirit. I don't know. Maybe I guess shrug. I don't know why I said an answer to Eddie, but maybe I missed some of the conversation. Um, Piersh, I'm trying to find your channel. How how many subs do you have? A hey, Eddie said so Tabitha. Uh, well, I'm on Instagram more than YouTube. Uh, it's Piersh sings if you're looking. Uh, okay, Tabitha, I don't have Instagram, not allowed it. I don't have Instagram either. Uh, no worries. I hope I'll start a YouTube channel soon. I saw you singing on YouTube. Was that not you, Piyush? Oh, so I can relate to what you're saying. Oh, really, Piyush? Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. That's really nice. I'm glad someone can relate to what I'm saying. It's good. Um, Eddie, what, what about your title? um so um so i don't really know what you mean but um <laughs> so basically yeah so to get back to what we're talking about um which is basically um what advice would you give to others who are just discovering they are about asexuality and considering where they are or not so this is today's topic p.s yeah i didn't know i was ace until this february so this February, oh my lord, happy, uh, I was going to say like happy self-love day, <laughs> but happy international celebrate being single day, February the 14th. Tabitha, I felt really happy when you complimented my art. Good, Tabitha. You're, everyone's beautiful. You're all beautiful. You're all gorgeous. You're all lovely. And I love being here, you know, this is, I, I love being here, you know um oh bless you yeah oh that's lovely lots of love to everyone in the chat tonight You're all awesome yeah i found out in 2014 i've actually been searching for my asexual soulmate since 2014 i won't give up um 2014 yeah so i my full uh my full full uh, asexual label that I give myself is heteromantic grey a asexual younger cougar who doesn't like sex just kissing that's actually my full title that I put on uh, the dating site usually heteromantic mean I'm attracted romantically to the opposite gender guys I'm cis female so I'm born female love being female but I've got some male traits which I'm quite happy about um and then uh grey a for me means great area of kissing um, and I'm a, I'm erogenous with the guy's upper body, mm, not really below. Um, I don't, I like sitting on his lap in between his legs, all that type of thing. So that's kind of a erogenous thing. Um, teenager star relationship. And then, uh, I, I, 
asexual cougar. I specifically a I say asexual cougar because people are like, why are you on this site if you're a cougar? Because cougars are usually older women that like younger guys for sex. I don't like younger guys for sex. I like guys in their 20s because that's my age group that I relate to the most. Like, because I'm so young. Like, I'm talking to a really nice guy who's in the UK actually at the moment and he's part Indian. Um, but he's beautiful heart, beautiful heart and soul. Uh, but we're not suitable romantically uh, and relationship wise, we're not suitable. He's not really into kissing, uh, but he's absolutely lovely person. Um, and, you know, we got talking by ASAP as well. There's some good people on ASAP at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, you need to go now. It's really late. Oh, yeah, Tabitha. Have a nice uh, night. Yeah, I did start late tonight uh eddie you don't like a man's knees uh tabitha good night eddie so um no eddie you know what i mean i don't like touching a guy's genitals with my hands to be very specific um, so i don't mind sitting on his lap or in between his legs that's what i'm trying to say so yeah so i specifically say asexual cuga but when i was talking to this guy on asap the one in the uk that's part indian he was saying what type of lifestyle he wants. You know, like I was getting older, he wants a slower pace of life and, you know, to um, live in more peace and quiet. And I'm the opposite. He likes space. I'm the opposite of that, you know. I'm a city girl. I love being in the city. I'm, although I'm not right in the heart of the city. I'm near the quayside, uh, which is beautiful. So I've got my little bit of countryside in the city. And, um, you know, I just love where I live specifically, really adore it, you know. And, you know, I find that guys, as they get old, as they get older, I'm really young, but as they get older, they want this older lifestyle. And he prefers to stay at home and cook and stuff. Whereas I do like going out. I like going out clubbing, you know. I'm a young girl. I just, you know, so although I'm older in birth certificate age than some guys, I'm actually really, really young. I'm usually younger than them most of the time. <laughs> I end up with usually he's the older one, even if he's younger and best of age and I'm the younger one. Because it's kind of like, you know, I'm like just starting my life now, you know. <laughs> and so um, it's really, really important, you know. So I think, um, you know, it's 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 good to be very specific if you want to give yourself um, a label and identity, but don't be like worried if you haven't figured it all out yet or if it changes, you know? Um, and I specifically say, I don't like sexual kissing, you know, because I want to make that clear. Cause obviously people, like I said, cougars traditionally are sexual and go for guys in their twenties to have sex. So I would specifically say asexual cougar doesn't like sexual kissing because it was confusing some people a long time ago. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not interested in sex, you know? I know if I was to have sex, it would be with the younger guy because I'm only attracted to young guys. It definitely would not be an older guy, but I don't want sex. Um, but I know that if it was, then it would be a younger guy. And I've got far more in common with younger guys in general overall, you know? The guy, I start, the guy's part Indian that lives in the UK that I was talking to, he's 31, I think, something like that. So, you know, um, I usually go for guys in their early to mid-20s. <laughs> it's getting a bit old for me anyway. I did say to him, I'm probably going to be way too young for you. Um, right, so uh, we started off with Elle's uh, story. Now let's go to uh, D. So here we go. Uh, what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexuality and considering where they are or not? Uh, D says, don't have any sex unless you're confident you want it. Also, don't feel the need to put yourself in a box one way or the other. Also related, just because you've done something before doesn't mean you need to do it again or do it with this particular guy. And again, I think that's so important because um, I was having the discussion before that if you do get into a relationship with a sexual person and you're asexual and you do want to try sex out, you need to make it very crystal clear to them that you just want to try it if you're an asexual that wants to try it out of curiosity and that it might never happen again, right? But you have to understand that sexuals a lot of the time be like, you've had sex once with me, so why don't you want it again? You know, I'm still the same person and they don't understand. So you have to understand you could 
you could be putting the relationship in a in a position where you know you might end up splitting up over that if they if they're like well you've had sex once why not you know why not have it again if you don't like it and they want it then you know it's not going to be a compatible match um never ever ever do something you don't want to do you know don't push yourself to do something that you don't want to do because the relationship isn't going to last to be quite frank with you even if you start having sex with a sexual person unless you really don't mind it you know, you're going to want to give up at some point or you're going to want to literally reduce it. And, you know, if you're doing it a lot in the beginning just to please them and then really you don't want it, several months down the line anyway, you're just going to be fed up with it and not going to be able to do it anymore. You're going to start getting nervous and anxious and you'll just like richly clam up and it's going to be no good for you, you know. So it's better in the beginning to be upfront, to say it like it is and to be willing to walk away than be with a person who's wrong for you because like I always say on this channel if you're with the wrong person the right one will not come along so very much you've got to see if you're compatible in multiple different areas right and there are some sexual people that can be without sex but they're very 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 few and far between right and like I say once you start doing that with sexual they kind of usually expect it they like well I don't understand why what's the difference you know we've already done it once but, you know, there might be there might be some people that can just accept it once. It depends, I think, how high their sex drive is and how their mind works as well. So uh, but don't do anything you don't want to do. Very, very, very specific about that. So let's go on to who we're going to have next. Do, do, do. So we've had L. So... The next one in a sexual perspective is Jen, Jen Mullen. Right. So um, Jen's advice to others who are just discovering about asexuality and considering where they are or not. It's pretty common to think you might be demisexual before you land at asexual. Don't stress on it. Identity and sexuality can be fluid. Don't let anyone give you trouble because you said something before and realised you found something that fits better now. So that's very, very important. Piyush, OK, this speaks to me. I would do it to please my ex, not realising that I didn't actually want to do it. Oh, it's really nice to have you here, Piyush. Piyush, I love that name. Um, Yeah, it's it's... I'm glad you can relate a lot. It's really good. Yeah. Um, please your ex nor is and you didn't actually want to do it. Yeah. It's um, like I was in a relationship in total for eight and a half years. And, you know, it's kind of like I did it. I mean, he was good at sex, but it was mostly the kissing and the foreplay stuff that I liked really than the sex. I wasn't bothered about the sex, but it's kind of like he did that with me and then we did the sex thing. And um, and he was nice to me then, but not the rest of the time. So it was kind of like the nicest time I had with him. And um, yeah, it was, I, I, you know, like after I split with him, you know, like I just couldn't do that ever again. And I realised I just couldn't have sex anymore. It wasn't something I thought about having, you know, looking back, like even as a kid, like I had my first relationship you know, my, my first boyfriend at six years old. And uh, he, I love kissing him lots, passionate kissing at six years old. It's quite rare. But he wanted to do other stuff and I didn't want that. And that was at six years old. He wasn't older than me. He was the same age. And um, he went to the same school as me. So, you know, it wasn't like he was an older guy or anything. Um, but yeah, it was just horrible. Um, I felt very invaded and it wasn't nice. And, uh, you know, so no, I know looking back, I've always been asexual, but didn't realise it, you know? Piersh, thanks. I'm really happy to be here too. I enjoy kissing and cuddling more than anything. And as far as intimacy was concerned, we broke up in June 2019. Oh, bless you. I'm really, really sorry, um, you know, for your loss. But I'm glad that, it's a loss I think needed to happen for you because I think that it's a loss that is a loss of a relationship, but it wasn't the right one for you. You know, like just, just remember you cannot find the right one if you're with the wrong one. You know, I'm very careful about that, you know, because it's like, I will speak cause I'm not that attracted to British guys, right? I will talk to British guys. There's a nice British guy I'm talking to on Facebook at the moment. 
But, you know, I asked myself the question, like, would I ever be happy with a British guy? Because I really want a foreign guy, specifically Indian. I, I always say this on my channel, everyone knows that, you know. I don't think I'll be satisfied unless I'm with my Indian guy since 2014. I, I talk about him in my book, by the way, Asexual Perspectives book, published in 2017. Um, so I do talk about him in this book, you know. Um and it's just like, I, I don't think I'll be happy with any other guy until I find him, you know, or he finds me. Uh, no, it's all right. We retain our friendship despite everything. And I agree with what you say. Mm, it's quite hard being friends, though, with an ex, you know. I mean, I, I'm not friends with my exes. I just, I just, um, yeah. I don't, I mean, personally, I don't stay friends with exes usually, not unless I was in a very brief relationship with them. I don't, I don't, you know, it depends how the situation is. But I mean, taking that friendship to a new relationship, I don't know how your new partner would feel about that. Um, you know, I tend to cut off, you know, and just because otherwise the feelings can just come back just like that with me anyway, you know. I, if, I, if I have feelings for someone, it's very difficult to get rid of them. I have to usually really strongly dislike or hate someone to, to, to get rid of the feelings or I cut them off, you know, out of my life so they can get on with their life, meet the love of their life. You know, I know I've, I've had this talk before on here that I meet so many people who are hankering after their ex. I do it time and time again. Actually, Indian guys quite a lot. Usually it's someone that is really in their past, usually. Well, it could be like last well, yours is last year, isn't it? But I've I've met um I've met people before and they've still got feelings for their ex. And you can't move on, you know, you can't move on to a new relationship if you've got feelings for your ex and you're like, what if, what if, what might have been, you know? Uh, I understand, but she, I felt she is a good person. We've moved way past the stage where it's non-platonic. At least I have moved on. Where it's non-platonic. Non-platonic? Non-platonic. So you haven't got a platonic relationship. I don't think that's what you meant. Because <laughs> um, non-platonic would mean it's more than friendship, if you know what I mean um yeah i mean personally i just yeah i mean i've how many yeah as in i don't expect anything beyond friendship yeah i just i just ha usually i don't stay in touch with my exes from your ex yeah but i don't know if it's hard for her as well you know well, if your new girlfriend's fine about it, it's fine, isn't it? I personally don't like that, me personally. If a guy was talking to his ex and he'd been really in love with her, I wouldn't, you know, be very comfortable, but that's the way I am. You know, I don't, I'm like, mm. <laughs> It's like, I don't want someone else hanging around uh, them, do you know what I mean? That's like gone from their life. It's like, move on. Um, but that's the way I personally feel. And I also think, you know, it's healthier sometimes to just move on completely and have a complete break. But, you know, I, I know some people are different. Some people are still friends with their exes. So I can do it because I'm a hyper romantic. So that's where I come from. You know, it's like if I've got a guy that comes back into my life years later, I can feel exactly the same way about him that I did years ago. So I just cut usually completely unless it's someone I didn't, you know, if it's someone I didn't love then it's okay. There's someone that I only fancied, you know what I mean? And I wasn't, you know, didn't have any love feelings for them, you know, and I want, you know, they're okay. You know, they're okay. And, but usually, you know, like I've got, there's one person who I had, a, who I was a boyfriend. He was my boyfriend for about one night years ago. <laughs> and, but I don't even think we're Facebook friends anymore. And that was like one night years ago. And um, and there's a guy I dated but n never ended up in a relationship with. He is a waiter um, at a food restaurant I go to. But we're friends on Facebook, but we don't usually speak unless it's in the restaurant. That's it. Um, but I dated him for a couple of months, I think it was. I wasn't in a relationship with him. But all the... Yeah, apart from the guy... Yeah, I mean, the, the guy who I was only you know he's my boyfriend from one night that was years ago and he he saw me 
And um, he saw me in my old job and he said, I always knew you were asexual. I'm like, well, you could have told me because he, this one night he, we met the next day and he kissed me. And when he kissed me, it was like a lizard kissing me. And that's how I knew he was wrong for me and that I should only be his friend. So I'm, you know, told him on the phone later on that I, you know, and also he invited me away for a weekend in France. Like, um, and I'm like, I knew that most people who do that, guys who do that want sex. And I'm like, and this was years ago. This was like when I was, I think I was 16, something like that. 16, 17, I think I was. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it was just like, you know, I'm like, no, I definitely don't want to go to France for a weekend for you. I've only just got in a relationship with you. And yeah, when he kissed me like a lizard, I'm like, no. Hello, Megan. Mwah! Lots of love to you. Lots of love to you. Uh, Piyush, as in I don't expect anything beyond friendship from my ex. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's about expectations. I think it's about feelings. <laughs> Thanks for the thumbs up. And I, I just personally, I, you know, ev everyone's different. But personally, I, I prefer if I was in a, I, if I was to be with a, a guy, I would be happy that it was such good friends with the ex. Really, that's me personally. I don't I don't want an ex hanging around. <laughs> and you know, what I mean, it's kind of like, nah, that's me personally. And also, I think it's more healthier a lot of the time to just move on completely because usually someone's got feelings for each other most of the time. They don't usually just completely go away. Um, in my personal experience and opinion, but you know, everyone's different. You've got to live your life how you see. And if you're happy being friends and your current partner is um not not got a problem with it, it doesn't matter, does it? Everyone's good. Um <laughs> it's nice to see you, Megan. So yeah, so um I think it's really uh well as an individual I respect her. That's pretty much what is there from my end. Yeah. I mean, you can still respect someone without being in contact with them. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's up to you what you do. But, I mean, personally, me, I just I just part ways a lot of the time. I just, like, you know, <laughs> I'm just, like, no, it's, I just, like, but that's the way I am. You know, I'm hyper-romantic, so I, I have feelings for my friends that I don't want to have. I get attracted some way to my friends, which is a bit of a nightmare. Um, but it's just the way it is for me, you know? I don't want to be like that, but it's just the way it is. I don't experience any platonic attraction whatsoever. Diddly squat, nothing. I have no sexual attraction, no platonic attraction. So I just jumped from meeting a guy to having some feelings, either romance attraction, aesthetic attraction intelligence attraction spiritual attraction i usually always have some attraction but then i'm a hyper romantic which is kind of like a bit more rare um so yeah i think this is interesting go back to what i said in here this person jen i uh, said so it's pretty common to think you might be demisexual before you land at asexual now i in in my past experience again different experience um i would say it would be common for someone to think they're asexual and then turn out to be demisexual. So the other way around, because if you are demisexual, you literally experience sexual attraction only when the deep, deep, deep emotional bond has been formed, maintained and sustained by both parties. That's the only time you can feel sexual attraction. So I would, you know, in my, but I think that right as well, because I have had people that thought they were, I think I've heard of people who thought they were demisexual then realised they're fully asexual. Um, but I think I've heard more go from asexual to demisexual because they didn't experience any sexual attraction for years. And all of a sudden they meet this person that they just happen to experience sexual attraction. It might be like one person in their life. It might be just a handful of people in their life, you know. So that's quite interesting. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That's quite interesting, I think. <coughs> I was coughing earlier. It's not a good sign, is it? I have problems with my throat sometimes. Right. Um, Cassie. Um, right. So, Cassie, uh, what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexuality and considering where they are or not? 
my advice would be to listen to yourself most of all. I think this is really good advice. Don't give in to peer pressure. Feel free to experiment and try different things if that appeals to you. But feel just as free to say no to something. Talk to someone if you want to and don't try to force yourself to be something you're not. There's nothing wrong about being asexual, just as there's nothing wrong with being sexual, be it hetero, homo, bi, pan or whatever. And that's what I think we have to remember is every sexual orientation is valid. You know, yes, I'm 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 like asexual, but, you know, whether you're heterosexual, pansexual, bisexual, uh, you know, homosexual, whatever type of sexual or asexual you are, you're all valid. Every sexual orientation is valid. No one's better than the other. Although we may think that ours is better for us, which is fine because, you know, I, I'm glad I haven't had sex since 2011. This is my ninth year sex free anniversary in October. Well, I don't know what day it was in October that I had last had sex in 2011. So from November, I will have been sex free in nine years. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really, really good. Um, you know, I think it's something to celebrate. And I think, you know, like, um, I would agree, listen to yourself most of the time. So, you know, even though I give advice out on this channel and dating relationships, you have to listen to your own gut and what feels right to you and what you know in your own mind is right for you. <laughs> Thanks, Piyush. Um, you know, and so it's very, very important that you go with what you think, you feel, your gut instinct, so that you begin to trust yourself and you trust your own judgment, you know? We all have different opinions. We all think differently. We're all individual. We all see life and the world differently. And I think that's so important to embrace that, you know. I think it's good to discuss things. I think it's good that people do have different points of view. I think it's good that people can live different lives. I think it's good that there is different sexualities out there, you know. I think everyone is valid and everyone deserves to be heard and to be who they are, you know. And if a sexuality doesn't suit you or you don't like it, you have the ability and power to always walk away, you know, if someone, especially if someone's imposing their sexuality onto you. So, for example, if a heterosexual is saying, well, you, you've got to experience sexual attraction, you've got to like sex because that's a basic instinct to need. I get this quite a bit from sexuals. Like, I had it the other day in the entrepreneur uh, dating group I'm in that's not specifically for asexuals, but I found two people in there uh, one on the asexuality spectrum and one who thinks they might be asexual and they've got my book. So they're reading it at the moment. So, um, you know, the, the guy, one of the guys in there said, oh, how, how can you stop yourself wanting a basic need? You know, and it's like, I don't have that need. It's I lack sexual attraction and that, and someone else didn't understand it. It's like, well, why don't you have that need? It's because I lack sexual attraction. If I lack sexual attraction, I'm not sexually attracted to anyone. That's where that comes from. I have no need for sex because I'm not sexually attracted to anyone. I don't look at someone and think I want sex with you. That's what it means, you know? And so um, I think they eventually got it or they just decided not to answer anymore, you know? Um, and that's it, you know? No one, for asexuals, it's perfectly logical, normal and right for us not to want sex. It's natural for us not to want that. It's natural for it not to be a need of ours. It's natural for it not to be part of our physiology or the way we think, because that's natural for who we are. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, you know, why Why question asexuality? Why not question heterosexuality? Why not say, well, why do you need sex? Why? You know, there's there's people who live without it for months or years. So why can't you? Do you know what I mean? It's just the same sort of thing. Um, so you could just go on and on and on with every sexuality questioning it. Just because heterosexuality is the main sexuality doesn't mean to say it's the right one. Doesn't mean to say that everyone should want sex just because that's the majority. Doesn't mean to say the majority is right. You know, but I think the key is to work out your own sexual identity. And your own asexual identity, you know, um, and asexuality is so there's so many nuances, you know. I I feel that I really have nuanced needs where um, my asexuality in dating relationships is concerned. It's so very specific, but it's good to be specific because if you're not specific, you let in a whole world of people that aren't going to be right for you. It's like you know, it's like 
you want to be a shepherd that shepherds the sheep and that you get rid of all the sheep that are no good for you, that aren't like the sheep you actually want to keep. You know what I mean? Um, it's the numbers game dating relationships. You know, you've got to go through a lot of frogs, if you like, before you meet your prince, princess or person. Um, you know, you, you've got to, you know, weather the storm, as it were. Um, and you've got to be prepared to do that and wait it out, not settle. Too many people go too wide and they're so wide and they're so like, oh, I'll, I'll be so wide in what I want. And they end up getting someone that's not compatible. And they end up in a having strong feelings to someone, an attachment to someone who's not going to be compatible with them instead of sorting the deal breakers out in the first place, which is sex, marriage, kids. These are deal breakers. So some asexuals want kids. Like I met an Indian guy on ASAP um, uh, who lives currently in the United Arab Emirates. Um, oh, sorry, he's not Indian. He looks Indian, but he's not Indian. He's foreign, though. Uh, he's cross um, between two different foreign but he, he's not, he loves, looks Indian but he's not Indian but he uh, wants ideally it's not you know it's not guarantee but he's thinking about adopting a kid right I don't want kids I categorically don't want kids I don't want my lifestyle you know and I, I've tried to say to him well I don't want kids you know and still he carried on talking to me but from him carrying on talking to me we're not compatible anyway. So I've, you know, the last message I sent was that I wish him well, but we're not compatible, you know? And I move on. I don't, you know, if I stayed friends with every single person that spoke to me on a dating site, on a dating app, I just have like no life, you know, because I'm specifically, I, 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 on ASAP, I have got a few friends now. On Facebook, I have got a friend on there as well, you know? These people are actually my friends. Um, I, I can sit, well, especially the guy who's um, part Indian that lives in the UK. He's got a really beautiful heart. The guy who's 31, I think. He's a really, really nice person to talk to. I see, hopefully, that we'll be friends for some time, but it's very new. That's a new friendship. So I am looking to get more friends now in some ways, but I don't want to, you know, I know I'm not really attracted too much to these people. You know, it's not like I'm going to be attached to them and like I've got to be in a relationship. Whereas someone who I'm really highly aesthetically attracted to and romantically attracted to is no good for me to stay friends with. Because I will always be thinking, what if, what if, what if, what if with them? So I cut off usually from them. I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, nah, I'm looking at, I'm like, no, you're no good. You know, and I, I messaged this guy that said we're not a match, you know. Um, it wasn't just because the adoption thing. It was the other stuff he was saying that's that's just not suitable um, you know, I have got different standards and different expectations. And, you know, I've got my my version of what honest means is different to his version. So I wish him well, you know, I'm sure he'll find someone. Um, he is coming back to the UK, but he's not currently in the UK. Um, but yeah, you know, I wish him well. But, you know, I I don't, you know, if I stayed friends with every single guy that fancied me, I'd just be like, <clears throat> not have a life like I said and if you too busy like spreading yourself too thin that you can't be having a life for one thing and another thing is you know you you you're cutting yourself off from the possibility of having time and energy and effort to put towards that future person you know I know that I've got a future person in my life it's going to take a lot of time energy and effort if I if I have tons and tons of people just for the sake of having friends, do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to have that time, energy, and effort to put towards that person. So you've always got to be thinking about the current situation you're in and your future. And if you're doing, you know, if you want to do dating relationship, if you want to seriously commit a relationship, you have to be thinking, what part of your life are you going to be able to fit this person in that's not currently in it? You know, you should be thinking about them being in it before they're actually arriving so that you're fully equipped, you know? So any guys that I'm like, you know, quite attracted to aesthetic romantically, I won't carry on talking to them, you know, thanks for the thumbs up. Um, because I just think, you know, I need to make space for the guy coming into my life, you know. Um, but on ASAP here, yeah, I'm talking to what two people regularly on there at the moment, both in the UK. Uh one, I don't think there's any attraction between me and him, which is quite rare. Uh, well, probably from my end, there's a tiny bit, actually, because he does look a little bit like an Indian guy that I used to like years ago. So I think, you know, there's a little bit of traction there, but, you know, not enough, which is great. Um, I don't think there's any I don't think there's any attraction from him. I think it's purely friendship. 
I don't feel any attraction vibe from him towards me whatsoever. And I don't put that vibe out to him because it's not really like that. Um, the guy who's part Indian in the UK, there's a little bit more attraction for him because he's part Indian, but, and he's got a kind heart, but really, I know me and him are just like friends, you know, I'm not really like, he's not my usual typical Indian look anyway, he's very different, but he's a really beautiful person, I feel like he's got a really kind heart, and I'd like to stay friends with him because he's a really good guy, I think. You know, I just feel he's a good guy. I'm not the type of person that's right for him. I know that. Um, so that's good, you know. It's like the less attraction I have, the more I can stay friends. But any guys I've got, like, really, you know, lots of attraction, more I can't. Um, so, but asexuality is a journey of discovery, you know. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you discover that you're a different type of asexual. Plenty of people do. Some people find out they're not even asexual, you know. I think there's less people like that, um, but it does happen. So um, anyway, what? So yes, I think it's very good. Like Cassie said as well, don't force yourself to be something you're not. And there's nothing wrong with being asexual because obviously a lot of heterosexuals they try and make you feel there's something wrong with being asexual. That there's not. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You're perfectly fine just as you are. So uh, this is Waywalker's story page four three one in this book um so what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexuality right, and considering where they are or not be you if a label helps you get comfy in your skin sweetheart use the heck out of it if none of them fit it's oh that's okay too just trust your gut and never allow yourself to be violated especially not because that's your primary relationship you're being really unfair and not putting out is abuse that's like that line is a big fat lie. Don't buy it. Yes, please, please, please do not buy any lines that sexuals tell you where you're not putting out. You're frigid. There's something wrong with you for not wanting sex. Do not listen to that. Right. You are perfectly normal for an asexual person to not experience sexual attraction, to not want sex. You're perfectly fine as you are. Right. And if a guy is speaking to you like that, or any gender, I say guy because I'm only attracted to guys, if a person is speaking to you like that, they are just saying something to make you feel bad about yourself so they can get their way with you. This is called manipulation and abuse. You do not want to be in a relationship with someone who's doing this type of stuff. It's not healthy for you to be with this type of person, right? But there are quite a few of these people around, right? They will twist it uh, so you're denying them something and therefore they might start denying you stuff or you know and they can try and control you and have power over you because they're trying to make you feel guilty about not doing something that a lot of people in the world are doing right just don't listen to it you know you don't have to have sex ever in your life you can remain a virgin forever i think it's really really good if you've kept your virginity for yourself, I think it's an amazing, amazing achievement because many people haven't. I haven't. And many others haven't as well, you know, because of the society we live in. You know, I was pressured into having sex. I gave in because I wanted love and I associated love with sex like most people do. And that's what's really bad. It's a lot of conditioning from a very young age all across the globe as you know in order to have love in a relationship you've got to have sex and of course I thought you know I don't want him to leave me because he was piling on the pressure about other people have sex you know at his age you know and that's the type of stuff he was telling me so again you know if someone's saying about you know like oh everyone's doing it you know and you don't want to leave them I lost that guy anyway after six months he dumped me and told me he'd been looking at other women you know which is probably why I don't you know, I get funny about uh, guys around other women, you know. That's why I really want an asexual guy. Um, but some asexual guys are not always um, are not always uh, honest either. So you've got to be careful of that. You know, I've known asexual guys that do flirt with several women at once and it's not good. I like Piyush when I first spoke to him on ASAP because he told me pretty much he's already taken. I respect a guy like that. I love guys like that. I like the fact that he said that already to me, you know, that's how guys should be. If they're in a relationship or almost in a relationship with someone, they should already be saying, you know, that I found the one. If they think they found the one, say that to, the, you know, tell people, warn other people off. There's no point in wasting my time, is there? 
you know what I mean? And that's, you know, it's much better to be up front. And I thank you for that, you know, because there's not many guys like you that would do that, you know, and that that's good because it means that person's going to be able to trust him, you know, and know he's trustworthy in a relationship, which is really, really important. You know, but there's so many guys, you know, pretend they're single when they're actually in a relationship. Even on Facebook, it's something that really bothers me personally. And, you know, if I'm in a relationship with a guy, I expect him to put his status in a relationship with me on Facebook, not pretend he's still single. Um, so that's something I personally don't like. It's like, you're either with me or you're not with me. If you're not with me, then don't be with me, you know? Um, I wasn't proud of someone who's proud to be with me, not someone who's secretive. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know even married men who don't even put them married, which is dreadful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Piyush. I have to say my dad's really good because we're not friends on Facebook, me and my dad, but my dad sometimes watches his channel. Hello, dad. And he put um, in his profile that he's been married for years, you know, to my mum. And so he didn't say, my mum's not on Facebook, but he said I've been married for X amount of years. So I think it's really good that he puts he's a married man on Facebook. You know, it's very, very important. It doesn't mean to say people, you know, some people don't, you know, some people will probably, some people ignore the fact that someone's married. But what I'm saying is it's very good of my dad to put that on there, you know, respect to him. I appreciate that, you know, it's respect for my mum as well, which is great, you know, and it proves it's taken. I like it when people do that, you know, it's respectful, it's mature, it's adult. And it also shows proud to be in a relationship and committed. Do you know what I mean? Like so many people are just like swipe culture these days. You know, swipe this, swipe that. It's like swipe the next person, you know. I think that you shouldn't stick around for a person who's not right for you. So if I know very soon on that there's a person that's not right for me and I'm interested in them romantically, then I just say that, you know. I just like basically blunt we're not suitable and move on do you know what I mean because there's certain people I just know aren't right for me and I have no reason to be friends with them you know so I just move on I don't need a ton of friends I just need really good high quality friends which I've got I've got three best friends um and you know some others but I've got three very 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 uh good best friends you know um one of whom's asexual, so uh, Sam, you know, yeah. So, and one who's discovered they're not actually uh, asexual like they thought they were. So that's very interesting. Um, yeah, very interesting. So um, I've been friends with them for a long time as well. Um, and I'm seeing my best female friend who's not asexual this Friday for the first time in months, you know, because of lockdown when I'm recording this in July 2020. So I'm seeing... Her on Friday, I cannot wait. I'm so excited, so excited. Um, but going back to, you know, like um, advice, like some people find that labels really help them identify <clears throat> across, you know, the asexual spectrum some way. Other people don't like labels. <clears throat> I drink water, by the way, in these mugs, not tea. Um, but what I would say to that is I think labels really do help on dating sites and stuff. Because if I'm looking for a guy for a relationship, I want to know what type of asexual he is. I want to know that he's interested in women for a start. If he's interested in blokes, that's no use to me. I, I know quite a few asexual guys that are into blokes. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, um, that's something I really need to know because I don't want to waste my time looking at a guy that's clearly not ever going to be interested in me as a female, right? So that's very important to, like, you know, make sure they say that. And also, you know, are they romantic or are they aromantic? You know, do they have romantic attraction or do they not have romantic attraction? That's a very important thing to know, right? Because if you're looking for a really romantic relationship and someone's not romantic, it's not usually going to go well together. Doesn't mean to say it can't, but usually it's the opposite, you know? And if the person who's aromantic doesn't want a romantic relationship, not interested in romance, doesn't like it, and the person's really romantic, it isn't going to work. I'm a hyper-romantic. I like being romantic 24-7, 365 days a year. You know, I love it. I think it's a uh, lifeblood. For me, not for not for aromantic asexuals, you know, for me, it's like a lifeblood of a relationship for me because I'm just hyper-romantic. So I just like romance all the time. I like it with myself. It's great. Um, I need to do real romance with myself. I'm missing myself because I usually take myself out on dates in cinema. I haven't been able to do that for ages. I'm watching movies and doors though. Um, but yeah, so I think labels can be very important on dating sites, you know. 
And, you know, it's like, I also think that you need to explain, you know, how things translate. Because if I say grade A in part of my title, people will think I experience sexual attraction when I don't, because that's usually the textbook definition of it. So I usually say that, you know, my kissing sexual and behavior, despite the fact I don't experience any sexual attraction, I know that's going to put some guys off me. Because some guys who are asexual don't like that idea. They don't want someone's sexual behaviour. Uh, I mean, at the moment, I've started trying to talk to people on the more sexual end of the asexual spectrum, like the grey, actual textbook grey asexuals, those that do experience some sexual attraction sometimes. But I'm finding, like I've found before, that they are too sexual for me because they kind of want to do other sexual acts, you know, and if they don't want to intercourse. So that's very difficult, you know. So that's what I mean. I think personally... You know, I think labels do help other people, even if you're not, you know, keen on using them for yourself. I think they actually help others because when you go on a dating site, you've got to think you're not putting yourself out there for you, as in you're not doing a description for you to look at someone. They're looking at you, so you've got to put a description out there to see if you're going to attract the person that fits most closely fits that description. If you're not kind of saying much about yourself then how are you going to attract the person that you really want to be with you're not you know like i've put on asexualitic lately that um i'm an asexual cougar looking for my cute young asexual cub now i know that's going to repulse and repel a lot of asexual guys they'll be like "Ooh, i don't like that idea of being an asexual cub i do because i think it's nice and cute <laughs> um you know it'll repulse and repel some guys but that's okay because they're not my guy right? They've got to be comfortable and confident and happy with an older girl. You know, they have. And so if I re repel people, it's good to repel certain people. It's good to repulse them. So you don't want everyone after you. Why would you? What are you going to do? Fend off a thousand people? You know what I mean? Do you pick your one or if you're polyamorous, more than one? But you know what I mean? Um, you've got to, I think, you know, I, I had a guy in a dating, in one of my dating groups once on Facebook and he was like, I said, well, what type of person are you looking for? I don't know. I'm like, well, if you don't know, then how are you going to get the person come into your life? Because if you don't know what you want, then how's the person going to know what you want? They're not. You have to really be crystal clear on exactly what you want. Um, in the entrepreneur group, the entrepreneur dating group I'm in recently, I've got a lot of support from women on that. I'm actually shocked. I've got one woman said, you're my hero. Another one said, you go, girl. Another one said, I can feel your powerful energy. And it's because I'm so confident and comfortable. You know, I'm posting that I'm asexual. I'm posting what type of guy. I see a young foreign guy in his 20s, preferably Indian. Um, but, you know, I, I say all this stuff. You know, I say no sex, no marriage, no kids. I don't experience sexual attraction. I'm I usually put I'm hetero asexual, not heterosexual, because it's easier for them to distinguish. Because if I put hetero asexual, they'll just see heterosexual. Because sexuals only see what they want to see a lot of the time but if i put i'm hetero asexual not heterosexual they can see that there's it's like huh i've got to read that twice and they can see there's a difference and i explain what that is you know um, and i say that i'm out to the world about being asexual as well because lots of guys then they just like don't like that you know they don't they don't want to be in a relationship with someone who's openly asexual like i am and tells the world their private stuff quite a lot of the time but, you know, it's my mission. I'll always help asexuals. My mission is to get asexual recognised as a sexual orientation globally. And, my, you know, so no asexual has to live in fear of ridicule really cool ever again. My mission is to help as many asexuals as possible and to spread the word and to help with dating relationships. Because a lot of asexuals, there's still a group proportion of asexuals that have never had a relationship before or never dated before. And it's kind of like a minefield out there. I have a lot of experience and I have a lot of experience with sexuals, obviously, because I was in heterosexual relationships for over half my life. So, um, you know, if I can pass some knowledge and experience and skills on to others uh, that need it and want it, then it's all good and well, isn't it? You know, and I think, you know, the more people you can help, the better it is. You know, it's my legacy. When I'm not here anymore, I want people to still be helped by my videos and books, you know, so it's really important. But, you know, my advice to a, someone discovering that asexual or might be is to literally do as much research as you can about it before deciding that you're definitely asexual, you know, because I get some people that just literally come on and like, oh, they don't know what asexuality means. And they just stick the label on them straight away without actually being asexual or knowing they're asexual. And I think what you need to do is I spent three weeks researching before I actually definitely said I'm categorically asexual. 
and knew how I wanted to identify myself. So I think, you know, like give yourself some time and, you know, let people know if you're if you're not sure about where you're on the asexual spectrum, then say that, you know, I'm asexual because I don't experience a sexual attraction, but I don't know, I'm still figuring out where I fall on the spectrum. But I know people that are, I know an asexual guy who identifies bi-romantic. He only identifies as homo-romantic now, attracted to guys only. Um, my best asexual friend, uh, they identified as pan-romantic, but now it's, and now they're just attracted to guys or uh, trans guys or non-binary that look like guys. So they're only attracted to masculine um, people or guys. They're not attracted to females. Like, you know, like someone like me would be repulsive to them and is repulsive to them. Not as a best friend, but as in terms of like looks, uh, which I think is quite funny considering most guys in the opposite it's really funny i like it i like it it's good it's good uh so my best friend is totally repulsed by my look it's funny and good because it means there's no never going to be uh any attraction um problem there do you know what i mean um but they already know that i think they look nice when they look like a guy because they they're non-binary so sometimes they look more female than male when they're looking like a female I'm, yeah it's not my thing um you know, but I can say that because my best friends know what I'm like. So, you know, um, and obviously I'm much more attracted to foreign guys anyway that ever would be British. Um, so, yeah, I think I think labels are good for helping other people identify, you know, um, how you are and how they, they would possibly fit into your life or relationship with you. I think it's important to, yeah, see, you know, do the research. Then when you figure out an issue, you know. But also consider, you know, like when you're when you're in a relationship, like when I was in heterosexual relationships, I felt compulsed to do things. I felt things when, you know, this was normal to do this, normal to do that. Since discovering I'm asexual, it's been a huge journey. Like I never knew, like I said in the beginning, I never knew that I experienced high levels of arousal, zero sexual attraction. I didn't know that about myself. So I've learned loads about myself. I didn't realize how how sexual in behavior my kissing is but i didn't experience sexual attraction i didn't realize how erogenous i could be with a guy's upper body uh specifically like with his chest like i love kissing his chest and stuff which i didn't used to i don't remember me being as much into that as i am now but there's certain things i used to do back then certain sexual acts as well because i pretty much used to do most things not bdsm stuff never done anything like that but you know like all different types of sex stuff like I haven't done anal sex either. I would never want to do that. It's gross to me. Um, but, you know, like oral, masturbation, sex, different positions, that type of thing. Um, you know, but now I've done all that. It's like, I, and now I know I don't have to do that. It's like now there's certain places I don't want to be touched or I don't want to be touching a guy because I've got the power now to choose. Whereas before I felt like my back was against the wall and I was having to do certain things because that's what society expected. And you just like, fulfilling an obligation or doing something that's expected of you not because you really want it and so I think that you know over the course of my asexual journey I'm like well no I don't have to have this anymore if I don't want to like do oral sex for example which I'm not into doing then I'm, I don't have to do that you know obviously if you are with someone who is sexual not asexual and you don't want intercourse they might want you to do other sexual acts as a compromise so that they can get their sexual pleasure still whilst you don't have to have sexual intercourse. But then you might not want to do these things, you know? And someone, again, on the more sexual end of the asexual spectrum, some of them love, you know, masturbation, oral sex, you know, despite not wanting intercourse. So you've got to understand that, you know, people have different sexual needs, even on the asexual spectrum, ranging from those who don't want any touching to those who want a lot of touching. And so it can be a minefield. So it's best to like, if you're doing dating relationships on a dating site, you know, bulk out your profile as much as possible. Be very specific with the deal breakers. So for me, I always say, if I haven't got many words, I say not, don't want sex, don't want marriage, don't want kids, because those are my three deal, deal breakers. I also don't want to live with someone as well, which can't always fit in my profiles with everything I put, because I put that I like tongue kissing, PDA, because for me, 
like kissing a relationship i have to have i can't live without kissing a relationship that's me personally right i need lots of kissing lots of it you know and i find a lot of asexuals they prefer cuddling so i'll put like i want uh kissing tongue kissing pda public displays of affection i will not be someone who like is secretive with their affection and just in behind closed doors it's not me i like to kiss my guy whenever wherever <laughs> in that way i really do i need to be free in that way you know to express my asexual sensual sexual behavior zero sexual attraction side <laughs> so yeah um you know there's certain things i just love to do you know i'd like sitting on the guy's lap in between his legs kissing and cuddling him kissing him well I'm, when i'm going around the theme park for example love theme parks roller coasters i can't go on everyone because i hate heights but, you know, if I'm waiting for a theme park ride, I want to be there, like, kissing and cuddling him while waiting for the ride. You know, some of those rides can be 40 minute wait. You know, I, I can be doing productive stuff like kissing and cuddling <laughs> or chatting as well. I do like chatting. I can't just do all physical stuff, obviously, because I would be like, mm, this is all it is, a physical relationship. It's not what I want. Um, but, you know, like when I'm going around theme, theme park zoos, aquariums, all that type of thing, uh, even in the supermarket, like holding a basket together can be so, like, oh, exciting fingers interlocking on the basket mm, mm, mm. see and you know i'm a hyper romantic 100 so you know i think you've got to be very specific about what you want but i just take your time you know and if you found like you do fit somewhere else on the asexual spectrum that's okay if you find that you don't fit on the asexual spectrum that you made a mistake or and you realize you're not asexual that's fine um i just mentioned that you know like one of my friends doesn't identify as asexual anymore you know, they've recently told me that. So that's very new for them to come out in that way. You know, uh, they actually they got confused because they do have they are in terms of their um, attraction. They do. They're asexual towards one gender, but not towards another. And so they didn't realize they focused on the gender that they were asexually attracted to. And they pretty much didn't <clears throat> didn't focus on finding out the other stuff. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up. So to be fair to them, you know, they thought they were asexual because, you know, they, you know, some people do. They identify, some people identify as asexual and sexual. Really, you know, if you experience sexual attraction, you're not asexual at the end of the day. But you can be, have asexual fears. So you can have, like, for example, asexual and romantic attraction to one gender, but no sexual attraction whatsoever. And then you can have sexual attraction and asexual romantic attraction to the other gender. But you're still not asexual because you're still experiencing sexual attraction, full stop. You know, <laughs> you know, you are still not asexual because you still experience sexual attraction at the end of the day, even regardless of where it's one gender or multiple genders, you know. Uh, but some people in the asexual community, they do, or some people do come into the community, identify as as two things like that so um yeah but it can be it can be difficult if you've got attraction for multiple genders and really you're like asexually attracted to one and sexually attracted to the other it can be a bit confusing if you haven't worked out the sexual attraction of the other gender um, i've only ever been attracted to guys i'm not interested in women at all like that uh -uh -uh. um i i got more guy friends as well um in general so yeah so um you know, no, I've known, like I said, I've known uh, someone who's uh, a guy who became, went from bi to homo. Um, so I think I've known quite a few people that have, you know, been very specific about honing down on the gender that they're really attracted to or changing the gender they're attracted to. Um, and like for me, I've known people that do identify as asexual, then went to demisexual, for example. So um, I think, you know, we're all valid. We're all wolf of fire i thought that i was pan for the longest time oh it's lovely lots of love lovely to see you here i don't know have i spoke to you before um i thought that i was pan for the longest time until i realized i was orientated aero ace aesthetic attraction oh right wow ace your aero so you're aromantic asexual so you lack romantic attraction and you lack sexual attraction but you have aesthetic attraction yeah um, yes, yeah, some aromantics, those that lack romantic attraction, do actually have aesthetic attraction. Um, and so, yeah, that can be confusing. 
Um, because, you know, like people think that if you don't experience romantic attraction, you don't experience sexual attraction, you don't experience any type of attraction. And I've known for some aromantic asexuals, they don't experience any type of attraction apart from the platonic attraction. Um but, you know, there can be some uh, aromantic asexuals that do experience aesthetic attraction. You know, there's multiple attractions. Um, and it can be confusing. I, I can separate all my types of attraction, where it's aesthetic, romantic, spiritual, emotional, creative, close, uh, intelligence attraction, all those type of attractions. I feel all about seven different types of attractions. And I can I can separate them all and I can say which guy... I feel this type of attraction to, which guy I feel that type of attraction to. Um, usually for me, aesthetic and romantic go together, but not necessarily. So my best uh, friend, uh, asexual friend, they, I think they're aesthetically attractive, but I'm not romantically attracted to them at all, which is really good. I'm really glad about that because I wouldn't want to be romantically attracted to my best friend. And because they are British, obviously I'm not. I'm not, I'm not as aesthetic. I don't find them aesthetically attractive like I do foreign guys. I just think for a British guy, they're good looking for a British guy. But they're not a guy anyway. They identify as non-binary. They, they, them. But because I'm not attracted to girls, uh, if they ever look like a girl, I'm, which they do sometimes, I'm not attracted to them then. <laughs> and like uh, you know, I'm like some, cause sometimes they ask me about their looks, like different pictures, and I'm like, well, I like you in this one. But this one, you look too female. I like, but I like looking like a female. I said, I know that's great for you. I'm just not attracted. I can't ever be attracted to females or guys that look like they're women, um, or you know, non-binary that look like they're women. I just can't be attracted to the woman look. Um, but yeah, I think that's really good as well that you've explained that wolf of fire because you know, it can be difficult. You know, some people struggle. I mean, I never had any struggle whatsoever knowing what gender I was attracted to. Never ever. But I have, I have, um, I, you know, I, I could have, like I said, I could have dropped the grey asexual because I don't experience any sexual attraction whatsoever, but I didn't think it's right. I prefer to say grey A for grey areas, heteromantic grey A, but sometimes I just use heteromantic because that's why I actually am. Um, but obviously I'm a hyperromantic as well. So sometimes in my dating profile, I do actually say heteromantic, hyperromantic grey A, asexual younger cougar who doesn't like sexual kissing. Because sometimes I, I think it's important to say the hyper romantic because there's no good me being with someone who doesn't like being with someone extremely romantic because it'd be kind of like, well, I don't want to be romantic just by myself. I can be obviously on my own and I'm single. and I've been romantic with myself for years, but then I may as well stay single if a guy doesn't want romance in a relationship because it wouldn't work unless a guy's naturally romantic and just doesn't realise it's romantic. And I think he's hugely romantic. Because some aromantics, those that lack romantic attraction, in my opinion, some of them can be very romantic in the things they do for their partner. They're just that they don't experience romantic attraction and they don't think of it in a romantic way. So some of them can be very thoughtful with gifts they make. For example, they can make gifts for their, for their partner, hand make them, and that's very romantic because it's special. Do you know what I mean? They've taken time and trouble to do that. Like they might hold an umbrella open for their partner if it's raining well that is very romantic to me you know they might like actually kissing and cuddling some aromantic asexuals don't mind kissing and cuddling you know um and so you know they might you know like i know if i i've said this analogy before like if if like with aromantic asexual if they went for a meal with you it probably be like we're hanging out together having a meal whereas with me it'd be like oh this is so romantic like, we're going for a dinner date together. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's two different mindsets, completely different thinking. Um, but it's okay to be who you are, and it's okay if you change your mind. Um, so just, like, don't put pressure on yourself to, like, decide straight away if you can't decide straight away. It's better to say, look, I know I'm on the asexual spectrum somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where, and I'm still finding my feet in that respect. You know, because um, it's probably better to say that than say you're definitely something and that hurt someone's feelings. Because if they, you know, um, obviously if you, if you think you're a certain th uh, way and then you change, that's different. But if you like, you know, if you're just wanting to label yourself for the sake of it because you feel like there's something wrong with not giving yourself a label, specific label, 
you can just say for now I identify on the A sexual attraction, but then be prepared to answer questions like, okay, so do you experience a sexual attraction? Do you feel romantic attraction? Because you know, if you're on a dating or relation, you know, if you're on a dating site and want a relationship, this person, you know, the other person's gonna want to know stuff like that about you. They're gonna want to know these type of things. I'm thinking, can I find one other one in here, story? Um, because it'd be nice to have another one, wouldn't it? Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Let's try and find another one. Let's try and find another one. Oh, thanks for the hearts. I very much love those. It's very sweet. Um, as a romantic asexual, I really like that. Oh, you're a you're an aromantic asexual as well, aren't you? Oh well, being really romantic, I really love the hearts. I think like hearts like that are very romantic. I think stickers, like you know, in Facebook when you can get those stickers, like emojis, right, that have hearts and stuff. I think they are so romantic. Like if I was in a relationship, I want my guy to be messaging me and leaving me like romantic, like little bears and little animals and with emojis with hearts and stuff because i just find them so romantic i'm like oh man it makes me more more attracted to them romantically it makes me very hyper romantic so maybe it's not good idea but um yeah so sappho's story uh yeah what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexual and considering where they are or not this is what i was just saying take your time especially if you're young asexual is such a huge spectrum with a vast wealth of identities you might find yourself in one of them. You might not. And if you don't, that's okay too. What was I just saying? That is really, really... Oh, they, they were taking the words out from my mouth, I think. Yeah. So, you know, it is a huge spectrum. People don't realise how vast it is. There's so many nuances. I mean, there's so many subcategories. I don't even know all the subcategories of ASEXA. There's, like, new ones coming out quite a lot. You know what I mean? So um, I think you've just got to, like, you know maybe like if you're not sure type into google your feelings because i find if you type your feelings you know then that can come up with a better explanation rather than specifically looking for words say so feelings. so when i first found out it was asexual it's because i googled i love kissing but not sex and it came up with asexuality so if you like um you know google how you feel like i feel romantic attraction towards guys uh, but I don't want to have sex with them or I feel like I want sex but then after I get into a relationship it just stops so that would be someone who's fray sexual for example which is part of the asexual part of the grey asexual end of the spectrum if you're fray sexual basically you do experience sexual attraction then once you get into a relationship it stops um, and you can be fray romantic as well so um, yeah that you know um which is again if you're going you know you're you experience romantic attraction you get into a relationship and then the romantic attraction just dies you know you don't experience romantic attraction anymore which can be very difficult for the person who gets in a relationship with you you know i knew a fray sexual person who came into one of my dating groups and they were in a relationship with a heterosexual woman but after a few months they didn't experience any sexual attraction they didn't want sex and of course their partner doesn't understand so like, well, you've had sex with me before, you're really sexually attracted, then all of a sudden you're not. So that's really, really difficult. You know, difficult to navigate a relationship like that. Difficult to understand yourself as well. So it's, it's so huge. There's so many variances and nuances, you know. Um, let me see. Can I find one more? Yes. Uh -huh. So this is C.A. Altman's story. Again, if you haven't got this book, it is down below in the description, the link to this book if you want to get it, because it's Asexual Perspectives Awareness Month, which is celebrating our diversity of the asexual spectrum and our differences within it. Um, so, yeah, C.A. Altman. Um, so what advice would you give to others who are just discovering about asexual and considering where they are or not? Remember that this is you you're defining. You're not going to identify just like anyone else because you're not anyone else. You're you. You're unique. Find a label that works for you if you want a label at all and use it if you want to. And if it takes you a while to find that label, so be it. It's not a race. It's a journey. You're on a guided safari, not fleeing hyenas alone, wishing you stayed at home. As long as you know who you are, whoever that is, and you are willing to communicate your needs and desires, 
to the other people who love and care about you, to the ones that matter, then don't worry about it. You'll be all right. And I think that's brilliant advice. I really like that advice. It's very, very clear that, you know, you're not going to identify it as a, like anyone else. Like I know that my where I fit on the asexual spectrum, I kind of feel I don't fit anywhere to 100% totally because because I'm heteromantic, but because I have some sexual behaviour in the way I like to kiss, I feel like I'm kind of stuck uh, between, you know, I'm definitely 100% asexual because I don't experience any sexual attraction, but I have sexual behaviour. And I feel that they don't kind of go together. And I, I have to keep coming to terms with that myself. I don't have sexual attraction, but I have high levels of arousal. To me, that's very contradictory. I'm a person who usually is a very black and white girl. Either is this way or it's that way. But with my asexuality, my sexual orientation is not black and white. It's got grey areas to it. And that is very difficult for a black and white person, you know, person who thinks black and white, this and this, to actually have grey areas because it kind of goes against who I naturally have always understood myself to be for years. But it's good because it means I can adapt and change. Just it still takes me a while to understand it. I don't personally, for me, there's no logic to why someone would have high levels of arousal but zero sexual attraction. It's not logical in my brain for, for that to happen, but it, it's true. It does happen, you know? Um, it's the way it is. So I have to have self-acceptance and self-love, you know? And and the fact that I'm attracted to foreign guys more than British and I live in the UK and don't want to move because I love my flat. I absolutely love living here. I've got everything I want. Then, you know, that's different. And the fact that it's specifically like Indian guys more than any other type of, uh, uh, you know, aesthetic um, attraction, you know, any type of, uh, you know, like um, ethnicity, then, you know, um, that's kind of strange. You know, my second attraction is Bangladesh guys, third Middle Eastern, but Indian's my top attraction. My most attraction, like I told you, I've got multiple attractions, like aesthetic, spiritual, uh, creative, intelligence attraction, emotional attraction, you know, like aesthetic, romantic, all those lots, you know, about seven different types of attraction. They're all for it. The, all of them I have with Indian guys, usually the whole lot. Well, they fit nearly all of them, usually. Or I can find guys that are Indian that fit all of them, you know? And so that's like all my top attractions in one. So it's very difficult. And I like younger guys in their 20s, usually, early to mid 20s. So that's different. It's like all these, I've got like nuance, a piled upon nuance, piled upon nuance. So I'm looking for a very, very, very specific person. So I realize it's going to take me a lot of years to find that person. They might still be too young for me at the moment, you know? <laughs> it's possible you know but when the time's right i'm sure they'll show up you know or maybe i'm just too young for them <laughs> i go out clubbing don't i hey don't want to stop my clubbing um and so you know it's 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 important to understand that no two asexuals are the same and you are gonna have nuances and it's still something i try to come to terms with myself because i do struggle with that i'm like you're so different you know but it's important to embrace your differences it really is um and you know like they say like ca altman says it's it's a journey not a race and i think that's what's so important you know it's like i'm an entrepreneur if you didn't know as well like i'm i've been learning personal professional development since 2012 and with entrepreneur journey you know it isn't easy they make out a lot of the time in commercials that it's so easy um to like for example make money online it's so easy to go and do your own live your passions and dreams right I think in in some ways it's easy to do, but it's it's hard to make a full time living at it, right? And so you know it's it's but you got to remember it's a journey. It's not just about everything perfect, everything going okay in life. It's a journey that that is true of anything in your life, not just your sexuality. Everything in life's a journey. It's the th the friends you make, the things you learn about yourself along the way, how you develop and grow yourself as a person. You know, I've changed tremendously. Like years ago, I couldn't have spoke like this. Uh, thanks for the thumbs up. I couldn't have spoke like this on a, on a channel. I couldn't have told the world about my sexual orientation. I couldn't even speak about sex. Like 2014, when I first found out I was asexual, I never talked about the word sex. I was like, I didn't even speak to my best friend about it, you know? Um, and so it was kind of crazy, you know, like here I am years later doing a stream that's over an hour long, you know what I mean? Um, turn the world about my private life to help others. So, you know, your whole life is a journey, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an 
asexual person, whether you are, you know, like whether you're just pursuing your goals, passions and dreams, you know, maybe you're a photographer and you start off not even know how to use a camera. And then, you know, by the time, you know, a few years time, you're like taking professional photographs and maybe even selling them, you know, like life is a journey. And it's very, very important to embrace the journey and to appreciate, you know, like so, so many people, for example, who want to make money from home, for example, and they forget that, you know, it takes a long time to know all the, learn all the skills properly to do that, you know, and to put in all the hours that it takes, you know, it's not an overnight thing like it appears to be, you know. And so people, you know, like, will be like, oh, you know, they, some people will give up, some people stop, some people stop pursuing their dreams, but they don't realise that part of the beauty of it is the journey. And this is true of your sexuality, your asexuality. Life is a journey and life is what you make it. And it's, a, it's how you learn about yourself and you grow and develop yourself as a person, you know? I, I never knew I experienced high levels of arousal. I didn't know that. I thought I was heterosexual for years, you know? I never knew that I could be erogenous with a guy's upper body. I never knew all these multiple attractions. I didn't, I didn't I know that you can get, you know, like, a, I didn't know that you could get, like, separate types of attractions, like, creative attraction and close attraction i didn't know all this stuff right i didn't know it at the time you know and you know i mean i'm i'm i've got a few books out on amazon besides the asexual one you know i've got some other books you know but i'm on my second book now that i'll be published this year for asexual i mean that is that is my dream you know years ago i i i i wouldn't have even thought i would have books out and then and then more less years ago i thought oh i'd love to be a published author and then here i am years later with my own publishing company and i'm working on more books you know and and people buy them and it's incredible you know and so you know life is a journey it's it's the skills you make the people's lives you change the people's lives you impact you know whether that's your local community your best friends or whether that's more on a global scale, you know, and you should congratulate yourself on being part of this journey, you know, it's not going to be easy, journeys are rocky roads, they don't always go straight lines, you know, they go off from veer to the left and the right, and sometimes it can take you a long time for you to discover what's right for you in a relationship, in your life, as a person, and, you know, it can take a long time for you to discover, like, what you want to do with your life. You know, you might be in Australia, decide, no, I want to up sticks and move to Canada. You might be, like, having a certain type of life one minute and thinking, this is really not for me. This is what I'm supposed to do. But this is not what I want to do. This is not my passion. This is not my dream. Life is so short. Life is so short. And we need to embrace the now, not just be thinking about the future or the past all the time. We need to say, right, where are we at now in life? What is good right now about life? How grateful and thankful are we right now in this life? What have we learned? Sometimes we we forget what we've learned in life, you know? We look back at our life and or in negative ways. We don't look back and think, my God, look how far I've come, you know? If I look back at my asexual journey going from the fact I never spoke about sex at all, uh, even to my best friends at the time the fact i never obviously knew i was asexual the fact i didn't understand that arousal sexual attraction and sexual desire were different even it took me over a year to understand that maybe a year and a half i saw another video about it and i didn't understand i thought sexual attraction sexual desire and arousal were all the same thing i didn't get that they were separate then i started to understand that arousal and sexual attraction are different but i'm like how is sexual desire and sexual attraction different because i would i don't experience sexual attraction but i know if i did i couldn't experience the sexual attraction without the sexual desire because i couldn't just desire the sex in and of itself i would have to really love the person do you know what i mean i know that about my personality um, but it's it's a huge, huge journey. And the friends I've made, the asexual friends along the way, you know, and I hold I've been arranging my own asexual meetups now in person for over five years. You know, I, years ago, my anxiety was that bad. I had to just see people one on one. I couldn't be in a group. I could only see a person one to one all the time. Now I organize group asexual meetups, you know, that is how far I've come in my life journey with myself and my asexual journey. But with asexuals, it's worth it, you know. I pushed through my boundaries and fears in October 2015, Asexual Awareness Week it was. I launched this channel. This channel's been be five years old in 2015, you know. 
that took a lot of guts for me to talk about sex and masturbation stuff. I felt really shy of doing that. I felt like, oh my God, you know, why are you going to tell the world that, you know? I had to consciously make that decision. I'm a very conscious person. I believe it's good to be conscious, like consciously think, what are you doing? How's it going to play out? What What's going to be people's reactions? Be prepared for it. You shouldn't stop doing something, no matter what someone's reaction is, but you have to be prepared. You'll get different reactions. You get some people who love it and some people hate it. You get some people saying horrible stuff. You get some people saying supportive stuff, right? But you have to understand that everything that's going to come up in your life, we have to be pushing through our fears. We have to be pushing through our boundaries. We have to be growing and developing ourselves as a person. And you know, we can lean into our sexuality, you know? I mean, I, I know now that there's lots of places I don't want to touch a guy. But if I go into a relationship, a long-term relationship, where I haven't been in for years, I think, would any of that change? Would I, for example, I don't like nudity, right? But sometimes I just think if I'm going to be in a long-term relationship with someone, I really, you know, like my mindset at the moment is I don't want a guy seeing me naked because I just went, what? But if I was in a long-term committed relationship with an asexual guy, not a heterosexual guy, but asexual guy, maybe I might be more like lenient on that. Maybe I might think like, okay, I might change my mind on that and I might allow him to see me naked because it's just more convenient if I want to jump out the shower in my home and, uh, you know, he happens to be staying over because I just jump out the shower, I've got a mirror and I just brush my hair or whatever dry myself and it's, I don't you know I live on my own so I don't really like bother I just like out in the like with a towel around me and then dry myself naked a lot of the time you know, I don't mind looking at my own naked body I just don't usually like anyone else seeing it and I don't like looking at other people's naked bodies usually either I, naked chest is fine but you know like I might change my mind on that there might be certain things like but I'd have to do that consciously. But at the moment I'm not comfortable with that but you know I have to be thinking long term sometimes you know and I think it's very important when you get into a relationship to be setting the boundaries as they currently are and not expect to change each other. Like if I can't get a guy who's happy to never see me naked, then there's, there's no point in being with a guy who thinks I'll change my mind on that. Because at the moment, I'm not uh, wanting to change my mind. But lately, I've been thinking I might change my mind. But that's my prerogative. It's not for them to change me or to be with me on the on the basis that I might change my mind or they think I'll, I'll change my mind, you know? And so, you know, just kind of explore yourself and your sexuality. If you are single before you get into a relationship, explore what touching you like to do with yourself, for example. Explore what touching you might want a partner to do with you. Explore the idea of what it would be like with them in your life as well, you know. Like, um, if you're looking for a relationship, like, how would that physically work? Like, for example, with me, I don't want to live with someone. So they would have to come to live near me in my city, right? They've got to look for a job. They've got to look for accommodation. They've got to, like, if they're not currently living here, you know, how's that going to work? The economy at the moment has gone down. We're in a, like, deep, severe depression, aren't we, in the world at the moment? Well, particularly in the UK, we are at the moment. I shouldn't really say about other um, places, but I know there's, like, uh, you know, bad economy everywhere at the moment, pretty much from what I've seen um and youtube financial videos and stuff so but you know what i mean it's, it's kind of like how would that happen it probably wouldn't happen now you know um and then it's like you know most asexuals have to travel for a relationship so you know it's it's not just about your asexuality per se it's about you know if you want a relationship um how is that going to work out like and if you don't want a relationship maybe you want a companion or best friend to live with in the future who's also asexual you know how's that going to work you know and so you have to understand your own asexuality, your own sexuality, and you have to understand your life journey. You know, like I'm I'm very different in some ways than what I was years ago, but I'm also similar. You know, I've gone back to being my young self that I should always have been in the first place, you know. But I used to be when I was younger in birth certificate age, I was older. Now I'm older in birth certificate age, I'm younger. So I've gone backwards in a good way. Um, you know, but I've got more life experience. So you know, just keep growing and developing yourself as a person and keep learning about your sexuality, you know, like I'm going to be bringing a new brand out this year uh, to help sexuals and get asexuality recognised more amongst sexuals as well, uh, because I do a lot of dating relationship advice here, I'm going to be go, uh, going on to erogenicity, I'm still going to be doing this for asexuals, don't worry, but uh, my new brand's erogenicity, which, you know, I'll be, I'll be, you know, showing them much more sensual sexual behavior side of me on that channel you know so that's going to be quite interesting i might find them a lot more erogenous than i first thought i was you know i might end up 
being okay with more touching again like I used to be okay with it anyway so you know just explore yourself explore your life enjoy the journey uh, I think it's good to change if we want to change I think it's good to make change happen for us rather than to us I think that's a very very positive thing and I think the more we grow into ourselves and the more we grow into our future self the better it is but it's important to realize the now and be in the moment you know like maybe you're sat there thinking oh well I know I'm asexual but I'm not 100% sure if that's going to change in the future or there's something about my asexual rate I'm not I'm not actually 100% sure whether that's that's going to be right for me in the future you know just know it's okay you know it's okay if you find out later on in the life you're demisexual if you find out even you're not asexual later on then that's fine just make sure that when you do come across asexuality that you do actually explore a lot to see if it fits you in the first place and don't just jump on it you know because asexuality is not the same as being celibate right it's not the same as abstaining it's not the same as some trauma that's preventing you having sex but you still experience sexual attraction would have it if you hadn't had the trauma it's not the same doesn't mean to say some asexuals haven't had trauma quite a number of us have but you know if you still experience sexual attraction would have sex but you won't because of trauma you've had you need to get that sorted out but if you've got no sexual feelings got no sexual attraction and you've gone through trauma then you know you, you don't want sex you no sexual attraction then you are still asexual you know so just explore it, understand what it really means, you know. Um, I get some people that are like, oh, it's like being like a nun. It's like, it's not being like a nun, you know what I mean? I'm not choosing to abstain from having sex. If I wanted sex, I'd go and have it. I could easily get it. I don't want it, you know. Um, and just because someone's asexual doesn't mean to say they can't have sex or they're never going to have sex, but it can also mean they don't ever want sex and they're never going to have it, you know. So it's each person is individual. Sexual attraction it's different to sexual behavior. Someone has sexual behavior with zero sexual attraction. Like I have kissed guys in clubs and the DJ's eyes have been popping out. It's been that sexual in behavior. Yeah, I don't intend to have sex with a person. The DJ's like in front of everyone going, oh, you know, you need to get a room, you two. Because they think I want sex with a guy. I don't want sex. It's just the way I behave. You know, when I'm dancing, I'm quite a sexy dancer a lot of the time. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. You know, and so it's like, you know, I don't want sex, but that's how they see it because it's the behavior that they're used to associating with sexual intercourse, that type of behavior, you know, someone wanting sex. Whereas I don't, you know, I just don't. I just love the passionate kissing. Like, that is my sex, basically. Kissing is my sex. I think that's going to be my tagline on my new channel. Kissing is my sex. I'm not interested in anything else. Um, so, yeah. Um, just love yourself who you are i think you're amazing and i realize the journey is what makes it beautiful you know i feel so blessed that i've had such an incredible journey in my life i've done loads of things that only people would have dreamed of you know if you're talking about just a personal life journey i've saved someone's life who was trying to commit suicide i was in the local newspaper for it years ago i got a good citizens award for it as well i've been in actually to St James's Palace in the UK and met Her Majesty the Queen and spoke to her um, that was like a highlight of my life you know I've been a speaker at the UK Asexuality Conference in 2018 that was a highlight of my life I always wanted to be a speaker um, you know I got my this book published which is how Asexual Perspectives was born in 2017 and it's under my own publishing imprint of Quirky Books so you can go and order this, you can get it on Amazon, or you can actually ask uh, to special order it from a bookshop, you know, because it's got its own ISBN. You can pretty much get it anywhere in the world, the print edition. Uh, e the ebook's just on Amazon uh, or my own site as well as a PDF. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I've got beautiful asexual friends. I organise my in-person meetups. I never thought that would be possible years ago because it's only one-to-one -one I could deal with. You know, I've made most amazing friends, genuine, genuine friendships. Piyush, wow, you've accomplished so much and you're a great person. Oh, thank you, Piyush. Lots of love to you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm really blessed. I'm really blessed. I think I, sh I don't know if I've shown you before, but I can show you. <laughs> I got mine and I wear a lot of uh, eat or stuff. I got Pooh Bear on tonight. I wear my night clothes a lot. So. 
Uh, let me show you. Like, I've got my PJs on as well. I've got zzz. Um, oh, and I love eat all. Eat all. Like, I will show you just so you absolutely know it's true that I spoke to Her Majesty the Queen. It's got pictures on the wall over here. Let me just grab them for you because I know I'm off camera at the moment. Um, <laughs> you see my legs? See my legs? Um, but it's important I show you these because. I think it's important to see what you can achieve in your life, you know, rather than people just saying blah, 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 all the time they don't achieve anything. Right, so um, this is my Good Citizens Award. I don't know if you can see that. I got it from the police in the UK. Basically, it was a woman that was trying to jump off a bridge. Um, it was quite a long time ago. But yeah, so um, Devon and Cornwall Police in the UK, I was presented with that. And then uh, this is when I went to St. James Palace. This is when I was actually speaking to her. So uh, this is this is Her Majesty the Queen in St. James Palace, and that's me. So yeah, I was an official photographer, but yeah, I went to the actual palace. It's got a real throne in it as well. So and that's me after I'd finished talking to her. Ah, uh, so you can see my face in that one. See, she's gone to the next person. There is in the room, there's like 200 per room, but you've only got like 10 people each side to speak to her, I think it is. Is it 10 or 20? I think it's 10 each side. There's certain people selected to talk to her, and there's other people that are not. Um, I was one of the people, though. So I, there's me and two other people. So I used to be a community service volunteer person. And because I saved someone's life, I was nominated as one of the people to go and see her. And there was only four people that were nominated to, to see her. But of the four, one, one didn't work for the community service volunteers anymore. And uh, community service volunteer. I, I used to be part of CVS and CSV, Community Volunteer Services and Community Service Volunteers. Um, so, yeah, and basically... Um, uh yeah csv community service volunteer so i've got another i've actually oh, i may as well just get it down and show you <sighs> so because i got an, a certificate from them as well <laughs> so right community service volunteer see i got that as i was presented that um so that was before i saw the queen um i was presented with that and told you got an invitation to see the Queen, and then, then that uh, that's what this, this. So these were in conjunction. So I worked for community service volunteers, but I wasn't specifically working at the time. And then I saw this woman that was going to jump from a bridge. But they, because it's a community service volunteer thing, you know, like it was recognised as something I would do as a community service volunteer, even though I wasn't on duty or anything. You know, I wasn't actually officially working. Um, it's a voluntary position anyway. But you know, they were like really so proud of me that I got that I got presented that and I got a bouquet of flowers and the invitation to St James's Palace um so yeah you know so um you know I've done more in my lifetime than some could ever hope to achieve you know um and I I I think success is not you know to do with money I mean I'm not really motivated by money I'm motivated by responsibility and a sense of achievement money third so I did this thing years ago at my old job which was to see um, what you're motivated by and first came out responsibility second sense of achievement third money so um I I I I gauge success by the lives you've impacted how many of your dreams and goals ambitions you fulfilled yourself which don't have, have to have anything to do with money, but could do, you know? And, you know, I know that this person whose life I saved, I'm still friends with that person. Um, and, you know, to this day, we don't talk very much um, for reasons I can't go into. Um, but, you know, not because they don't want to. If they see me in the street, they do, but their personal circumstances are such that they, you know, it's difficult for them to speak to me. Um, but you know, um, it's, you know, I'm still friends with the person, you know, and they're alive, you know, um, they were injured at the time. They dislocated their pelvis and their arm because they actually did. They were g going to go off this bridge 
and they were leaning right over the edge and I tried to stop them. So I was holding them up with one hand and I was trying to pull them back up, but they'd had too much to drink and they were too heavy and I couldn't pull them back up because I would have gone down over them and they slid too far down the rock face and they actually ended up in the water. And so it was, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be a river, but it was, it was, uh, the water had gone under the bridge because it's usually grass, but because it was Jan January, I think it happened. January? I don't know if that's dated. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, well, that's later on, though. 3rd of January. Yeah, it says there, 2013. So because it was um, flooded, and so under the bridge was flooded, the grass was flooded, so there was water up there, and I couldn't actually stop her going down in the end and plummeted into the water, and then I had to go... And I phoned the police. I was on the phone to the police, but it was too late because she, she, the body weight wouldn't be held up, and I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't pull her back. She was too heavy, and she would have, I would have flung over as well and be dead probably. So you know, she ended up in the water with her head and was unconscious. So I had to go run round down over the bridge and get pulled her out of the water, her head out of the water, and that's when the ambulance arrived because the police had called the ambulance, but the ambulance didn't get there in time to and she had a dislocated pelvis and injured her arm because obviously I was what was this this arm I think it was held it was one of her arms that was held up anyway. Uh but you know after that was in January, by April she was walking around again with a stick. They said it would be six months before she could actually um before she could actually walk again but it was less than that because april i i met her for a for a drink in a cafe and yeah um you know it's amazing she's walking stick now she doesn't have any stick at all you know perfectly normal walking um so and that was quite soon afterwards about a year later i think she had to have physio for about a year and then you know fully recovered like that so i'm so proud of her actually you know and so you know i know that my life on planet earth has already been worth it because i've already saved one life do you know what i mean so even if something's happening tomorrow i know that i've had success because i i measure success by the amount of lives you save or impact in some way this book as well i've actually had people private messaging me saying this book saved their life i help them see they're okay some people are suicidal when they when they realize they're different and they don't know they're asexual or they just come across the term you know, this book puts it all into perspective. I know I've had people private messaging say, I know I'm okay now. I know I'm okay to be me. I thought I was broken before. I thought there's something wrong with me. You know, I, I've got friends who said I've saved their life as well and I've changed their life for the better because they've been suicidal before they met me. You know, that's what I'm here for. That's what success is to me. Keeping others and helping others to be alive who otherwise might not be. You know, that's pure success to me, you know, more than anything in the world. And, and even these books, like this book, because I'm a registered publisher in the UK, I've got my own imprint. This book is in six libraries in the UK, right? And one of them is the British Library. And they're, what they say on their website, you know, when, when you're, well, the place where I have to go and send it to, you know, what they say on their website about, you know, imprints, you know, being your own imprint is that when you send a book to the British Library, it will go down as a piece of history to be there for generations to come. And that's why I, I like, writing is my hugest passion in my life. I can't live without writing. It's part of my soul, and especially for asexuals. It really makes me happy because I know long after I'm gone, these books will still be here and it will still change lives from year after year after year. I hope to do a lot more change in the world about asexuality while I'm still on this planet Earth. You know, with my new brand that I'm quite scared about doing, helping sexuals in order to help asexuals more, really. Um, and so that's a bit scary for me, but I'll do whatever it takes to get asexually recognised amongst sexuals. Heterosexuals is what I have to get it recognised in because it's more widely known in LGBT community, but a lot of heterosexuals still don't know about asexuality. They don't understand it. They've never heard of it before, right? So I need to break that while I'm here. It's very important that I make a huge headway in that direction because I don't want people growing up thinking they have to have sex in order to be loved. What message does that send to people? Oh, in order to have a relationship, if you want love, you've got to have sex. It's really damaging. It damages the mind, damages your soul and your spirit and your emotions and your happiness if you're asexual and don't want sex. It's very damaging. 
you know it's damaging to your self-esteem as well oh so someone can't love me without sex you know i mean yes there are people that love and sex go together for there are a lot of heterosexuals that feel that way but there's also you know asexuals there's thousands of asexual one percent of the population is asexual which means one in every hundred people is asexual they might not be specifically right for you to be in a relationship with there's quite a lot of people that won't be you know because there's like i said there's so many nuances there tends to be more female asexuals than males as well so for someone like me who's only interested in guys that cuts quite a lot of them out and it's more aromantics those that lack romantic attraction the majority of aromantics not all but the majority don't want to be in a relationship they don't need it they're not interested in it it's not true for all our romantic asexuals because I know some that are in relationships and they want this married for years. So um, it's very, very important that you understand in life that everything is a journey. Your life itself, your asexuality, your sexuality, relationships, friends, people. Some people come into your life, some people will go from your life, but the true friends, the best friends, will stay with you through the tough times and the good times. They will be there for you. I used to hold very highly romantic relationships more than friendships in the past. I don't do that anymore. All right? I've got the most fantastic friendships I've ever had in my life. And my philosophy now is more like lots of relationships sadly come and go. But friendship is forever. You know, so the friends that I've got, my three best friends, you know, I should have them for life. I don't think any of them will not be my best friends, you know, which is beautiful. I also know that I, I'll be having another best friend in my life because I know whoever I end up in a romantic relationship will need to be my bestest ever friend. You know, they'll have to be ro romantic best ever friend and soulmate and love of my life. You know, that's so important. I'm looking for a soulmate. I'm not just looking for a person, you know. And sometimes you have to understand that your journey is different to everyone else's. And even if you're struggling you're not where you want to be right now in your journey just know it's okay you've got to learn to trust yourself I have to do this for myself you know I have to put faith and trust in myself 100% that even if my not all my life is where I want it to be right now that it will happen it will all work out okay it will all be fine you know I didn't know that woman was going to be there about to jump off the bridge you know I don't know it was seven o'clock at night after I come from work I was still in my work clothes but then I saw this person, I saw the way they were looking down over the bridge and I thought something is not right, you know, and I was talking to them. I found out the reason. I'm not going to go into the reason. It's very private to them. I won't ever divulge that. But I found out the reason and um, I, I guessed what the reason was, you know, And but I wasn't able to, to stop them from falling, you know, but at least they're okay now, you know, because I had to go underwater, you know. <laughs> So they have to act very quickly in that case when they're unconscious and they're underwater, their faces and their nose and mouth is underwater, you know. And I'm just glad that happened, you know. And I think it's very important to know that you're all valid, you know. If you look back and think how far you've come in your journey, like look at, back at all the struggles you've probably been through, you know. I know asexuals have been through quite a lot of struggles because we don't experience sexual attraction. In a lot of relationships, we'll have had struggles. There will be a heartache and pain because we don't feel the same as a lot of people do. They're like probably in your childhood, you've probably struggled, you know, you're different, you don't understand why. And it's probably been like that quite a lot of your life. It's been like that for me, you know, I'm like, oh, but I'm happy now. Now I found the asexual community. Now I know who I am. Now I'm more confident and comfortable in myself. But I still work to do on myself. You know, I need more positive self talk. I'm trying consciously to talk to myself more positively. And self-belief, you know, I, I follow my intuition these days. Much like some people are like, why are you doing that? Or why are you not doing that? Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you've got to go with your gut instincts. You'll know it's even in my Asexual Perspectives book when they were talking about, you know, advice to for people just find out they're asexual. You have to go with your own gut instincts. You have to go with what feels right to you. You know, like I said, I could drop the great A bit, but I don't want to. I was told on Ave and I can identify with the great A by someone because I'm not a textbook grey A. I don't experience sexual attraction. But I'm comfortable identifying that way. It's more true to who I am in the sense of sexual behaviour despite not experiencing sexual attraction. I feel better for identifying like that. You know, so make sure you identify 
with what you're comfortable with, not just what someone tells you they think you are or think you should be. No one has the right to tell you what to do with your life. They can give you advice, and it's up to you whether you take it or not. But there's quite a few people as well who make people feel guilty if they don't behave a certain way, they don't think a certain way, they don't do things a certain way. You know, but it's okay to be different. You know, I prefer being different, to be honest. I am so bored with the norm. You know, I can't do, I can't even do a normal relationship. I'm very unconventional. I don't go to bed usually at very normal times. And I like a teenager star relationship 24 7, 365 days a year. That's hyper romantic with loads of kissing and cuddling and chatting, particularly kissing. <laughs> you know, it's just the way I am. I love it. You know, I don't want to cook and clean for a guy, which is another thing most guys expect. It's like, I, I'm not interested in that. I'd rather build a website or be on here with you guys. I don't want to be doing cooking and clean. I don't do the bare minimum I have to do for myself. That's enough. Thanks very much. It takes me all my time, energy, and effort to do that. I don't want to spend three hours in the kitchen, no matter how much I love someone. You know, and that's the other thing. It's like, oh, well, if you love someone, you do housework for them. It's like, that's just as kind of similar to saying, well, if you love someone, you'll have sex. It's like, no, if you don't want to do it, you don't enjoy it. And you, it doesn't make you happy in your life. Do you know what I mean? I don't think anyone should be saying that, but I've been brought up like, you know, to think that, oh, if you love someone, you'll do this. If you love someone, you'll do that. If you love someone, you'll do that. Not if it's to the detriment of your own sanity, your own health, your own energy, right? It takes me all my time and energy to look after myself and to maintain an energetic state a lot of the time, you know, as much as possible. It takes me all my time and energy and effort to do that, you know? I don't want to be doing that and trying to do that for someone else because it would dissipate my own energy and I need my energy for achieving my old go goals, ambitions and dreams, which is to help a lot of people in the world, you know? So I need that. I need that understanding, you know? Like, if a guy comes around to my place and I like, bring your own food, cook your own food, wash up after yourself. I'm not interested in doing that, you know? Uh, I, I'm having a relationship with you, not with a relationship with you in the kitchen. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's just the way I am, which might seem a bit weird to some people, but it seems a bit weird to me. And I'm like, oh, well, it is the way it is, Sandra. You know, I don't think it should be, if you love me, you'll do this. If you love me, you'll do that. I think it should be like, this is what I can bring to the table. Like, I'm very good at emotionally supporting a guy. I'm very good at that. Very good at listening to a guy, despite the fact I do like talking a lot. I'm also a very good listener. I'm good with mental health issues. Um, very good with romance and kissing. Can give him lots of affection. Um, good at supporting him in his um, creative pursuits and being like that as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot I can bring to the table, just that isn't traditional female housewifey stuff. I'm not interested in that. You know, so... I think in any terms of any relationship, when you get into a relationship with someone, you should be bringing some value to them. You should be contributing some way to bettering their life. Do you know what I mean? It can't all be about you and what you want. But I don't think you should go against your own personality or, or zap your own energy and zap your own happiness for the sake of a relationship because then it's not really going to make you happy. Just going to, I would just resent a guy if it was like that. You know, if a guy expects me to do cooking, clean as well because I. I might love him, but I wouldn't like doing that. You know, it'd be, it just be wouldn't good for me. So, you know, I think it's best to just um, really, before you get into a relationship with someone, really find out about yourself, discover as much about yourself. And, you know, there will be some people that come into your life and go out of it. You know, like I've had some friends at primary school. I have one particular friend and we've been friends for years. And I noticed that every time I tried to see her, like she would start making an excuse about being ill right and this happened like at least three times and so I said to her last year I said you know like um I'm not going to come over for Christmas and you know see you because I see you know I understand that every time I've tried to see you last like three times I think it is then you know you've not been well and I'm guessing that means you're not really wanting to see me um and I want to be having friends that are want to see me that want to spend time with me the love being in my company and that person said yeah it's not you it's me I'm like this with all my friends I just want to spend time with my daughter and her kids basically and because they got my had she had her daughter very young she was only 17 when she had her daughter so they're like sisters rather than daughter and mother so you know and you know so it was nice that she said that so we were still Facebook friends but that was someone I was, you know, like I, I used to spend time with. But I know when I was there, I wasn't appreciated. Like I, all my friends now, my best friends, they want to see me. 
they're very enthusiastic about it. They love spending time with me. So I'd say, you know, if you are struggling, I know a lot of asexuals struggle sometimes to get friends. But if you are going to get friends, get people that really love you and appreciate you for who you are. Because I've got three best friends now. One who, two who's not asexual and one who is, you know, and they're just incredible people, you know, and I think it's good for you to get good quality friends who love you for who you are and accept you for who you are, your asexual and everything. That's the most important thing. Be around people who love and support you as much as possible in your own asexual journey. And I think you'll be good. Anyway, I, I'm going to love you and leave you for now. I appreciate you being here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate everyone who's been around for nearly two hours now. I'm going to say thanks to everyone in the chat before I go because I like to thank everyone. So thanks, Tabitha. I know you were here earlier. Lots of love to you. And Piyush, thank you so much, Piyush, for being here. It's lovely to see you and take part in the stream. Lots of love to you. And Eddie, lots of love to you. I appreciate you being here as always. And Megan, who was here earlier. And Wolf of Fire. That's a really cool name, by the way. Uh, thank you for the hearts and everything. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate every one of you being here. Remember, just be super strong in your asexuality. When you do know you're definitely asexual, make sure you know it's non-negotiable. That's the best piece of advice I could give is when you find out you're asexual, you know, take your time to find out where you are on the asexual spectrum. And when you speak to people about your asexuality, make sure it's categorically non-negotiable people are not allowed to negotiate your asexuality you are who you are you exist you're real and your asexuality is non-negotiable they can't negotiate your own sexual identity right because if they start doing that say oh i'll just negotiate your heterosexuality or whatever sexuality they are shall i let's let's have a you know don't do it don't get into i just you know i i stop talking to these people if they're just not wanting to be educated or i just you know say my my asexuality is not negotiable that's it end of story Piersh, i learned a lot tonight uh this was definitely worth staying up late thanks a lot i appreciate you Piersh. yeah i know it's late thank you so much for being here with me for most of the two hours i think you've been here haven't you thank you so much i'm glad you learned a lot as well i appreciate you appreciate everyone that's been in chat thank you so much for being here lots of love and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon. So that's how you get notified of every time I go live right now or post a new video. So you have to have the bell notification pushed. And also, if you are um, on YouTube, you know, you have to have the notifications on for to, to see my live. That I'll come up live or have email open to see you get an email usually to say I'm now live. It's very important. And if you haven't already got a copy of Asexual Perspectives, do get it because it's really, really worth it. There's 47 different Asexual Perspectives in the book, including my own, uh, my own personal life story. But it's really worth getting because it just, you know, literally tells you pretty much anything and everything about asexuality, especially when you're new to asexuality. It just explains so much and all the different stories are different, but they're all relatable in the book. It's very easy to read format as well because every story is a separate chapter and told in interview questions and answers so anyway the links are down below in the description you can get it pr pretty much especially the printed book anywhere in the world you should be able to get it pretty much so yeah anyway love you and leave you for now pa thanks piyush for being here uh appreciate you thanks for everyone else like i said and i know there's other people watching so lots of love to you i'll see you on the next video live stream until next time embrace your quirky and each other's i'll see you on the next video live stream it's been an absolute pleasure take care lots of love bye for you bye Bye.